so uh, the assignment has actually four questions and most of them are more or less similar and the required results are also pretty similar all we have to do is change uh, some parameters and tweak the model a bit to get the desired results so what i'll be doing is i'll be going through the first question and i'll be covering all the basics that need to be followed to get the plots and the propagation constant and uh, the same will be repeated in every question and the results and the procedures and all the plots i get can be seen in the report in detail so i have already made the model for the first question because comsol is a pretty heavy software and it can take time to compute and process uh, nevertheless i'll be going uh, over the entire model again explaining what i did and where i did it so the first thing i'll do is i'll go into the model builder window and i'll uh, expand all these branches because it makes it pretty easier to understand uh, what has been defined where and what it can be used for so let me do that and uh, that does it so uh, to begin with uh, we need to define the global parameters on the basis of which our model will be built so we have defined the wavelength of light as 1550 nanometer we have the refractive index of the core the refractive index of cladding the height and width of the core cladding and the slab and then we have the corresponding wave vectors for the core and cladding which are simply calculated by 2 pi n by lambda and we have the frequency of the incident light calculated from its wavelength uh, once we have defined the parameters we need to build the model we need some geometric objects for that we use the rectangles and before we do that we must go into geometry and change the length unit to micrometer which is shown over here in the graphics window and we do this because we are working in the micrometer range and uh, we want all our parameters to be in that range so we build two rectangles which will be for the core and the cladding uh, we give it the width and height of this the slab and for the core we give the height of the core for the cladding we give the height of the cladding and uh, once we are done with the geometry part we get this model which is shown in the graphics window uh, after that we need to give the rectangles which are actually a materials now some properties so uh, we'll be uh, making two material branches and one will be named core we'll select the central region which is number 2 in comsol and we'll enter the value of the refractive index of the core we'll do the similar thing for cladding we'll select the first and third region which is this part on the top and this part on the bottom and we'll be giving it the refractive index of the cladding after that we come into the electromagnetic waves frequency domain ewfd physics which we added while we were creating a model uh, the wave equation is already there this is inbuilt in comsol and that is why we imported this physics interface because we are interested with this uh, equation that we get uh, the these are nothing but solving the max maxwell equations for the waves and this helps us get uh, the values and analyze the wave wave uh, what we need to in fact add is the port which are nothing but the boundary conditions so the first port that i have added and uh, by the way all the adding of the materials ports and the geometry it can be done by right clicking on the geometry part or we could right click on this and then go to port or an easier way would be to use the top ribbon and go to the particular section and choose the for example if you go to geometry you can choose the object you want to add you go to materials you can add a blank material like the core and cladding and so on so the ports have been added which are nothing but the boundary conditions and the port one is the one on the left indicated by these arrows these three arrows and we give it a numeric type and the wave excitation at this port is on means uh, this is actually the source of our wave the light which is incident since this is a model we had to have some source so we do that at the boundary similarly we have a port 2 which is exactly the same as port 1 with the boundary on the right which is indicated by these three arrows and the wave excitation at this port is off which means the wave will be completely absorbed when it reaches this end of the wave wave 
Uh, the global OD is something I'll come back to in a while. Before that, we'll go to the study. And the study is actually about solving the equations and getting the solutions in concept. So on this study, which was actually an empty study, we add a boundary mode analysis for the first port. Then we add a boundary mode analysis for the second port. And we add a frequency domain uh, for the waveguide model. So the boundary mode analysis, we enter the frequency of light, which is F0. We need to see the effective in mode indexes. And this is a region which has effective number of modes. Let me set that to 1 for the time being. And we'll search for modes around the value of the refractive index. Uh, the same thing is done for the second port. And the frequency domain, we just set the frequency. And now we click on compute. And this will give us the surface plots that we are expecting which will be the electric field distributions and we we'll plot the z component because that is what survives in the te mode so as you can see after the computation is over we get a surface plot for the z component of the electric field and we can see that it is confined in the core region which is a good thing because that's what we want in communication purposes and uh, these red and blue bands are nothing but the oscillation of the electric field inside and outside the plane of the screen of the laptop and it is nothing but the oscillation in the z direction so uh, we have we are propagating in the x direction which is towards the right and uh, oscillating inside and outside the plane of the screen we can also plot a surface plot to get a better understanding of what is happening uh, which i've done right here and as you can see this is exactly like the mode profile we expect for the TE0 mode which is confined and you would wonder why it is inverted the reason for the same is that in the 1D plot we have something known as the cut line and the cut line has been defined to be at the center of the waveguide at uh, the origin that is 0 a vertical line at the point 0 comma 0 and if we look at the waveguide and zoom in a bit then at the 0 comma 0 position we will notice that we in fact have a blue region and the blue region is inside the plane which i'm considering to be negative and that is why in the only plot we get a negative magnitude for where the electric field is existing and it dies out as it leaks into the core so this is it for the first mode uh, we can similarly obtain the uh, second, third and fourth mode and so on by changing the desired number of modes in the boundary mode analysis. So I'll quickly show the second mode and then I'll go to a mode which is actually not confined. The second mode happens to be confined as well. And once we are done plotting the various modes, uh, uh, getting the surface plots and the line plots, uh, we will go over how COMSOL can help us to determine the propagation constants. So, for the when we have two pro, pro, uh, two confined modes, which is the TE1 mode, we see we get a white line, which is actually a node at the center. And this node can be easily explained by the line plot right here. You can see it crosses the x axis at one point, and that is nothing but the node we are seeing over here. Again, it is a confined mode, there is negligible leakage into the cladding and the blue and the red regions mean the exact same thing, oscillation into and out of the plane respectively. And that can be visualized through the line plot as well. This is out of the plane and this is into the plane. This is the blue region and this is the red region. Now, uh, uh, after experimentation, I found that uh, only four modes are confined that is T0, 1, 2 and 3 is a T4 mode which is not confined which will make it design number of modes equal to 5 let me do that quickly and we will hit compute And as you can see here, the electric field is leaking a huge amount into the cladding and that is not ideal for communication. We are losing a lot of energy and this mode is not confined. Uh, and you can see that there are 1, 2, 3 and 4 nodes. 
and in the line plot we have one two three and four nodes so this line plot is correct and as you can see the magnitude in the cladding part is huge as compared to the core in which it is actually pretty negligible so that sums up uh, the number of modes and electric field profiles now i would like to quickly go over how to calculate the propagation constant and the effective refractive index for that we need to add a global ODE's physics interface which can be done by going in to the uh, home tab and we we'll click on add physics and we get this add physics window we choose from mathematics ODE and DAE interface I won't do that I've already done and in order to compute the equations in this physics we'll make another study study 2 and that can be done by doing add study uh, well i'll skip over that part it's not that difficult go to add study and choose a stationary study uh, once we have chosen the study we will go into the global ODEs and we'll go into the global equations one and we'll input the values of alpha and ky now alpha and ky are values uh, which are used to calculate the propagation constant Alpha and Ky are in fact part of a transcendental equation whose solutions are the propagation constant beta which has discrete values and the Ky is directly related to the K core and the K cladding and I would like to remind you that K is in fact the wave vector. Now coming back to the model, uh, I have input those two equations I just sh showed you into the parameters for the global equations. And once I'm done with that, I go to study 2, I go into stationary and I click on compute. So what this does is it solves my global OD and gives me the value of alpha and ky. It's interesting what I can do with that. I go into results and create global evaluations which I can do by going into results and creating a global evaluation. Now in the global evaluation, we can choose to calculate whatever we want but I'll be going into calculating the value of uh, the propagation constant beta and the effective refractive index. So this is uh, the global evaluation 2 is for beta 1 which is propagation constant. There's a beta 2 which confirms the value and then I have the effective propagation constant. These are the alpha and ky values and this is the numerical value of the propagation constant which we can get by solving the equation on pen and paper. So let me click on compute and the values will be shown in the table on the right. So the value, the rightmost value is the latest value. So the calculated propagation constant uh, for the TE4 mode because the number of modes is 5 comes out to be uh, 6.2 into 10 to the power 6 and if you go to the beta expression and click on evaluate and check the latest value I get 6.05 into 10 to the power 6 now this is a very close value and I can say that a uh, simulation worked well the reason it is not exactly same will be covered in the report and it is uh, due to the fact that Comsort uses a newton raphson method to carry out evaluation and uh, it is an approximation method which uh, improves its approximation with each iteration and Comsort uses 25 iterations and uh, sometimes uh, the values obtained at the end would not be good enough and the reason for this is that uh, the initial values that we give the global equations which is right here, the k core by 4 for alpha and k by what matters. So if if the initial value is not good enough, the newton raphson method will give a pretty bad result. So what I observed through experimentation is the lesser the difference in the refractive index between the core and the cladding, the lesser the initial value must be. So in case it, uh, the refractive index were 1.48 and 1.46 instead of 1.6 and 1.5, I would have entered k core by 8 instead of k core by 4. Uh, anyways, this will be uh, mentioned well in the report along with uh, a prompt from console for the error for the same. 
so now we have even seen how to calculate the beta values and the effective diffractive index values along with the surface as well as the line plots for the electric field so that pretty much does it for this tutorial uh, about COMSOL and the question 2, 3, 4 uh, will follow the same flow the only changes will be in the parameters and some constraints to the model but uh, the overall workflow will still be the same thank you